feel like we're kind of almost thing again. Um, despite everything we did, you almost feel like you can go out there again and mm. you can't sort of like, you know, you weren't trying to do build on what you've done, but it's, you know, it's uh, yeah, because still quite a difficult place. Yeah, I mean, I suppose in a way, I mean, you didn't suffer from the, you know, you did you did the first album with with little or no expectations, so everything that came was obviously just a bonus. So you, you know, I suppose it's a it's a case of like looking at the share price and it just keeps going up, and you go, okay, hold on, you know, there's clearly something here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's probably very difficult for you to be able to put your finger on it because you know you're too close to it. But I mean, it's in a, you know at a time in music when you know even some of the some of the best musicians are, are you know aren't connecting you know, with the vast majority in sort of, a, you know, in, in pop culture terms, I suppose. It's, yeah, you've got this this band that people just are, are drawn to, you know, um, more so than, you know, a, a lot of the other stuff that seems to be happening. I mean, have you, have you ever sort of tried to sort of pontificate over how or what it is that you are doing that, uh, that makes people sort of sit up and pay attention? Um, I think that... I mean, what we, we, the thing that we tried to do before, was, that, that, that I think is, uh, I mean, this is my only explanation. Mm. When we were when we were starting, we, you know, it was very, at the time in the UK, it was very much the kind of music scene was this kind of very kind of I don't know. It was like you always read about it in the press. It was always about this kind of small clique of group of people who were hanging out, and it was hanging out with models and actresses, mm. and it's just us, and you're not involved, you're not allowed, and it's very kind of boys club almost just, yeah and it was just sort of, I remember thinking you know well when I walk down the high street of my town and I see all these people you know they don't care about that no they don't, you know, no one's writing songs about about my life and then their, their lives no one's yeah no one to be saying anything no one seems to be even really taking these people seriously or mm. acknowledging they exist you know it was very yeah. much uh, you know We'll do the we'll do the we'll do the jokes thing. You just buy the um, yeah. t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and so we came out and you know and, and then someone. We we were singing about our next day lives. Singing mm. about our next day lives. You know, this sort of, you know and um, and I think that at first you know it, and you know it went. Some people heard it. They were like, "Oh well, you know, we're not interested in this." But mm. when it finally got through, you know, it got on the radio was the key thing. Yeah, it got on the radio, and ordinary people heard it and went, "Yeah, I can relate." I like this. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that and we made that connection. That's why the first album went to number one. It was 20 weeks after it was released. Yes, that it finally got there. You know, it was that kind of, you know, like I slowly see the you know, word seeping out there and getting uh, and and um, that's my. My own. The only reason I think is that you know you were sitting there going, what is it about the band that I love? You know, what is it about them that I love? Maybe mm-hmm. it's the reason. I mean, also I think that you know we always try to, along with that, we so always try and write us, you know. You want to? You know, I, I love soul music mm. and uh, 60s soul music, and it's always got a, you want to dance to and a yeah. melody you want to sing to. You know? Yeah. And so we always try and write songs that you can't get out of your head as well. <laughs> You've done that well. <laughs> I actually have a six. Oh, game in it, really. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'd, uh, at the time <clears throat> that uh, CCTV came out, I, my son was four years old, and uh, and Cash Machine was was his favourite song. <laughs> That's cool. It's like a, we're spanning the generation. You are indeed. <laughs> but as you say, I mean that's that's obviously the connect that people, you know, feel that uh, you know that you a you're 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 writing about them, but you're also you're playing to them. It's not a case of, uh, you know, I, I think people have got a little fed up with uh, with celebrity. Um, yeah. I don't think people perceive you know hard fire as being that kind of group. I think that you know there's that. I mean, I'll, I know what you mean about getting fed up with celebrity. However, you know, you do, you do see, you know, like Amy Winehouse in mm. the papers all the time, and, yeah. and she's selling records. I mean, mm. her record's a good record. Sure. Um, so, so, it, so it deserves to do well, and I'm not mm. taking any of that away from her. But mm. when you see, 
you know, the, when you see what it was selling before she was in all the papers and what it was selling when she was, you know, it's like that's obviously having an effect. So obviously people are going, oh, okay, so it's kind of. Um, Let me see what's there. Mm. Yeah, you know, you do kind of like these. There is a weird thing in this. In the UK, I mean, like, possibly, I don't see it as much elsewhere, but in the UK, it's still very much people just love it if, you know, if, if you're, you know, you're being talked about or you're being. You know, you're, you're here, there, or the other, you're, you're falling out somewhere, mm. and you're doing it. <laughs> I can't, I mean, and, and I can't, and I, you know, I, I just find that tedious and boring, yeah. and I can't, and I'm sure a lot of other people do as well, mm. but it is still, you know, still kind of like driving a lot of things, you know. And, True. You know, yeah, PR, I suppose. You know, yeah, I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, we fall out of clubs drunk, but <laughs> they're just not the, they're just not the ones. Um, <laughs> With the paparazzi hang out. Hang out right. <laughs> <laughs> that's comforting. <laughs> well, I suppose that makes you even more human, which will make people love you even more. But <laughs> I mean, was was yeah was was, was the second record? Um, you know, um, obviously, you you looked at album one and went, okay, well, there's there's stuff here that you probably didn't squeeze onto album one or you hadn't considered. You know, but how much of that of of what you did on the first album? How much of that did you did you bring with you? You know, onto the new album. Well, there was there was two two songs that we that we had from around the time of the first album mm. um, that were that you know could have gone on the first album, mm. and they were um, the main one. Those was can't get on without you. Okay. And we always the thing about that song was that we always thought this is a great song. You know, it, you know, it could it could be number one. You know, mm. it, but it just didn't feel right on the first album. It didn't fit. It just didn't. It just felt out of place. You know, mm. it just didn't sort of. I don't know, with the whole kind of sound of the first album, the whole approach. So we kind of went, okay, well, look, let's leave it off and, and you know, hope that one day we get to make another one. Um, and it was a big gamble because, you know, it was a, you know, at the time it was one of our strongest songs. And you're going, yeah, but it just doesn't feel right, you know, and you can't just stoke this on there for the sake of it. Um, and so we used that one and again, it kind of like, you know what, then now that it does feel right on this album, the other track was You and Me, which actually we didn't, didn't in the end make the second album. Okay. It, we, it was a, um, I think it's, you know, it's on some of the, um, some, it, you know, in some places released it's on there, and it was, yeah. a, um, it was a, released as a B-side to the first single. Mm. Um, so those were the songs that were kind of, you know, could have actually been on the first album. Mm. But then you have, like, a song like Suburban Nights, I mean, the original demo for that was recorded, I mean, it was right at the end mm. of, of the start of CCTV sessions, because... You know, we'd already, the album was finished, yeah. but I remember we all still had all the gear set up, so we hadn't gone out and toured it yet or anything mm -hmm. like that. So we just went down and I went, oh, I've got this idea, can we just chuck it down? And then I sort of built up some bits at home. Mm -hmm. So there was like, you know, songs that were kind of like, they'd been knocking around and then did, they just weren't, you know, that was the original idea went down then and, and I shall overcome a little bit after that, similar kind of sort of vibe. And then and then the others were kind of, and they were sort of worked on over the next, you know, year and a half. Mm -hmm. And the others were sort of like, you know, came out from them. So there was a kind of quite a wide range of songs. Like, for instance, Can't Get Without You was quite an old song. Yeah. Um, but then The King, which is the last track on the album, yes. was kind of written and recorded in the studio. Okay. Um, so there's quite a sort of range of... But, but the energy that uh, you know, CCTV had, <clears throat> you'd definitely been able to catch that, you know, again on, you know, Once Upon a Time, which is refreshing because I suppose the, the inclination is to you know in, in in trying to sort of up your game you you know you you probably you know you're not analytical but you've got you know you have more people watching and i suppose the yeah, the, yeah. the the opportunity to to you know try something that um something new could could work for you or could not work for you so i suppose it's a but it's a great place to be as well because i mean uh, you you have sort of lit, um a level of luxury now or opportunity that you didn't, yeah, you know, that the first album didn't really afford you. Yeah, I mean, we did have, we did have a feeling, you know, there was, there was definitely a feeling of, um, you know, we kind of, we sort of did just sit down and make the album. We didn't sit there and go, you know, really go, okay, well, how's it going to be? What's it? What are we doing? Mm. Like, what are we? You know, how should we try and remake the first one? It was never. No. We never actually thought like that. It was always just like, okay, well, look, these are the songs that everyone. We had, you know, we had like, you know, like 40 or 50 ideas for songs knocking around. Some sure. of them were finished, some of them were real early stages. Yeah. And there was there was a collection, 
definitely about 15 that everyone was saying, you know, these are the ones, these are the ones that, you know, that, you know, that the ones I like the band likes, and, you know, who's our producer, and mm. Warren, who's our, he's our manager, but he's kind of, you know, he's, he, he signed my old band and put our first EP out, you know, he's part of Listen, the band. Yes. <laughs> um, and, um, and, yeah, these are the songs that we kind of like, feel are, are the ones that you should go through, mm. and, like, you know, and that was, it was never, I mean, you know, there was at one, you know, at some stage there was like a, you know, do you need a, a heart to beat or a cash machine again to put out as the first single to get people, and it was like, well, if people want those songs, they can go and put them on the first record. Yeah.